will start from seated and just take those first couple moments to start to come into the breath. Maybe you soften the gaze, maybe you even close the eyes as you just start to let the inhales and exhales lengthen. Letting them slow. And then move in and out through just the nose. And maybe you take a moment here to set an intention or dedication for your practice. And in that next breath, you're just gonna go ahead and take the left hand to the right knee, right hand spins around behind you. Once you find your twist, inhaling for some leap, exhaling the twist just a little deeper. And then as you're ready, we're going to come all the way through to the opposite side. So the right hand's coming into the left knee, left hand plant. Starting to find that length and then exhale into your twist. And then from here, starting to come back towards center. We're going to do some seated cat cow. So as you inhale, just kind of waving out, exhaling the curve up and in, incorporating any additional movement that you may need to here. Maybe you'd rather do some circles or sway side to side. And that next breath, we're just going to rock over the knees, starting to find your tabletop. Maybe you kick those feet a little bit, just sort of paddling out the top of the feet. Maybe you tuck the toes a couple times. Maybe you still need a little bit more of that cat-cow. And with your next breath, we're going to find that neutral tabletop spine. We're going to go ahead and take the right leg straight out, starting to find your stability and your balance here, and then the left arm reaches. And you're just going to find that straight line of balance for a few breaths. And with your next el exhale, the elbow and the knee are going to meet beneath you. Releasing, we're gonna do four more. So coming in for two, and back out long, three, four, and oh, five. Tito, that was not a great time for that. Once you're back out long, once you're back out long, you'll let that right, that left hand come back to the mat. You're gonna to start to roll open and stack the hips. The left leg might wanna pivot out a little bit. If so, just let it, because you're gonna go ahead and roll open. So almost finding a half moon, but with a supported leg. And as you exhale, you're gonna to start to take that arm forward. The palms are gonna rotate down. You're finding another long line through the side of the body. And we're going to do five oblique crunches now as well. So really focusing kind of on the side body as we bring the elbow to the knee. Coming long, two, three, four, and five. After that fifth one, we'll find our line. Collapse back down to your tabletop. Feel free to move through just a little bit of cat-cow before we get to the other side. And then when you're ready, the left leg's going to lift. Once you find your balance, right arm comes forward, creating that line.
And then as you exhale, we've got our five crunches. So elbow comes into knee, coming along, two, three, four, and five. After that fifth time, we'll find our line. We'll let the right hand ground. We'll start to pivot that right foot out a little bit as you start to roll, stacking shoulders and hips. Starting first more in that half moon with the arm just straight up. Maybe the gaze is able to go straight up. And then you're gonna start to pull that arm forward. The palm's gonna flip down, finding that long line through the side body. And then as you exhale, we've got our five oblique crunches. So elbow comes to knee, coming long, two, three, four, and five. After that fifth one, back to the line, take it on down to your tabletop. We're gonna press back to a child's pose. If you still need to open those feet, maybe you tuck the toes here. And from here, we're going to play with this crazy little thing that Missy had people do in the threaded needle the other day. It was pretty neat. Inhaling the right arm comes up. You're going to thread it beneath the left. So from here, maybe you inch forward a little bit so that you're on the knees and your threaded needles from a puppy dog pose. So where Missy had people start playing the other day was from here. Maybe you stayed, you just found that twist and that deep opening in the shoulders. Maybe you tested your core and your balance by seeing if you could kick out, say, the right leg. Let it hover. Let it kick out that left leg. Finding some sort of balance and stability as you find your openness. It was really kind of interesting. If you stay here and you kick out that right leg, it is sort of a variation on that fallen angel pose we were talking about once back in the studio way back when. We're going to come back forward, left arm comes up, threads beneath the right. Once again, maybe you just enjoy that threaded needle and that twist and the opening of the shoulders. Maybe you, you incorporate your core and your balance by seeing if you can't lift one of those legs. Taking it out behind you. <laughs> yeah, the first time I did it, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I think you were taking that class. That's all. <laughs> It was one of the, like, one of her recorded ones. I was doing that yesterday. I was like, that's a great idea. <laughs> We're going to come back to that child, that tabletop, tuck the toes, take it all the way on back to your first down dog. And maybe you pedal the heels out here. Maybe you're already ready for that nice release through being still. And in that next breath, we're just going to take it towards the top of the mat, finding a rag doll or a forward fold of choice. And then as you inhale, arms are going to come up overhead. Exhale, hands come into heart center. From here, we're gonna move through three sun A. So those arms come back up, exhaling into your fold. Inhale to find your flat back. And exhaling to make your way through your vinyasa. Maybe it's a pretty uh, traditional plank and chaturanga into your back bend. Maybe you're throwing in some extra push ups or anything like that. We've always got those five breaths on the tail end. So we've got plenty of time to link up together.
And with that next breath, you're just gonna take it back towards the hands. Find your flat back. Exhale back into your fold. Inhale, the arms make their way back up. Exhale, hands come in. Meeting in mountain pose, second A. Inhale, the arms rise up. Exhale into that fold. Inhale to find your flat back. Exhaling through plank and chaturanga. Into that up dog or cobra. Nice, back to down dog. Good, you're making your way back towards the top of your space. Finding that flat back. Moving back into your fold. Bringing the arms up overhead. Hands are coming in. And we're gonna start to make our way through that final A. So the arms are gonna take it up. Moving back towards your mat. Finding your flat back. Moving through whatever your vinyasa is looking like today. Into your back bend. Back to that down dog. <laughs> and then from here, that right leg lifts. Maybe you circle out the knee, roll out the ankle, just starting to come into that space. And you're going to step that right foot in between the hands. The back heel is going to spin in towards the center line of the body as we just make our way up into a warrior one. Start to think about squaring the shoulders. From here, we're going to let the hands clasp behind the back. Inhale to find some length while you roll the shoulders open. Exhale to fold into your humble warrior. Then inhale, you're going to make your way back up. When you get to the top, you're going to start to open. Let the arms come wide into your warrior two. <clears throat> Exhaling back into your reverse. And then we're going to cartwheel it on down, moving through your vinyasa to get into that left side. Nice. And when you find that down dog, we'll go ahead and take the left leg up. Nice. So starting to open into that three point, finding whatever movement you need to here. And then we're going to step through finding that warrior one. So the back heel spins in, starting to make your way up. Squaring the hips and the shoulders as much as possible. Then from here, the hands come to clasp behind the back, inhaling to find some of that leaf, exhaling as you find your humble warrior. And 
And then from humble, we're making our way back up. We're gonna open the torso, let the arms come wide to find your warrior two. And exhaling on back into your reverse warrior. <clears throat> And from here, we're gonna cartwheel on down, move through that vinyasa. We're just taking that moment here to reset between flows. So that looks different for different people. Maybe you're still, maybe you need to pedal. Maybe you're in child's pose. And with that next breath, we're just gonna make our way back towards the hands. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling as you fold. With that next breath, you're gonna to start to bend the knees. And as you inhale, swoop the arms up into your chair. And as you exhale, dive on down. Inhale, flat back. Exhaling through your planks and chaturangas. We'll meet in an um, downward dog. Nice. And so from that down dog, the right leg lifts. We're gonna bend that knee, stack the hip, really open through that side body. Then that next breath, we're just gonna step that right foot back through the hands. We're gonna keep up on the toe, this time coming into a crescent. That next breath, we're gonna take the hands behind the back. Inhale for some length. Exhale to fold. Inhale, taking it back up. We're gonna find that humble again for two. Taking it back up. If you're having trouble balancing with crescent feet, feel free to switch to our traditional warrior feet. We've only got two more little pulses, four. And on that fifth one, once you get down to the bottom, if you still have your crescent feet, let's go ahead and drop that heel, put the toe spin in so you can really settle deep to the inside of that right leg for five breaths. And then inhale, we're gonna come on up, start to open into your warrior two. Drop on back into your reverse. Then from here, we're gonna come back out wide. We're gonna start to bring that right hand to the inside of the right foot. Really starting to twist open here. And from here, we're just gonna take that left hand to the inside of the mat, spin back up onto those toes. Maybe you pull forward through that right knee, getting a nice stretch through the front of the left hip. Maybe you drop that foot, rocking back and forth through Hanuman. 
So just taking five breaths here to sort of ease into that hip, work it however feels good for you. And with that next breath, we're gonna come back to our low runner's lunge. So on those back left toes, hands are to the inside of the foot, we're pretty centered. We're gonna go ahead and take that right hand and we're gonna take it in front of and diagonal to the pinky toe of the right foot. We're gonna reopen that left arm. You're gonna see if you can't step forward right into that half moon. From half moon, we're just going to take that left hand down. The hips are automatically going to want to square. And then as you exhale, start to fold into your half split. And then we're about to round out this posture, this flow on the right side. As you bring that standing split up into your high knee. Uh, left knee is coming up and high. Nice transition. Sometimes it might be a fluid movement. Sometimes it might be wobbly. The next leg might be different. And you're going to open out. Finish with your tree. Whatever type of tree you like. And with that fifth breath, we're just going to release our tree. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale to fold. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling to fold again. And we're going to move through one vinyasa before we get that left side. So hands plant. Maybe you step or hop back to your plank. Move through as many chaturangas as are calling your name at the moment. Maybe it's one, maybe it's three, maybe it's none. Into your back bend of choice. Back to that down dog. You've got a few breaths to just oil up that hip joint on the left side. So you're in your three pointed, stacking the hips, drawing circles with the knee, rolling out the ankle. Then you're going to take that left foot, step it in between your hands, stay on the back toes and find your crescent warrior. From here, we've got our five little flowing humble warriors. So the hands are in class behind the back. For extra balance challenge, you're going to stay on the ball of the right toes. If you do not want that balance, go ahead and change to your warrior feet, inhaling as you lengthen, exhaling to fold in, inhale up, two, three, and on that fifth one, oh, well, we've got one more, four, and on this next one, we're going to hold. So adjusting your feet to whatever options going to give you the best humble warrior. And then from humble warrior, we're coming back up. We're going to open into our warrior twos. Dropping back into your reverse. And 
then coming all the way over into that kind of side angle variation with the left arm inside the left leg. Starting first to open up towards the right. Just sort of priming the body for the half moon we're going to move into shortly. And then from here, we're going to let that left hand, that right hand come to the mat. We're going to spin back onto the back right toes and take those five breaths, finding whatever movement you need to here. So maybe you just like that really pulling forward in that low runner's lunge. Maybe you like to kick back, finding that half Hanuman, knowing that we're going to move into a standing splits later. And so in that next breath, we're going to rock back forward. If you drop to the right knee, we're going to plug back in through those back toes. We're going to settle that left hand in front of and diagonal to the left foot. And then we're going to go ahead and start to open that right arm. So we're going to see if we can't have almost everything set before we hop up into that half moon. As you exhale, you're going to take that right hand down. The hips are automatically going to want to square. And once they return to square, then you're going to exhale into that bulge for your standing splits. From our standing splits, we're transitioning into a little bit more balance. So from here, we're trying to bring that right knee up into your high knee. I just, oh, I didn't say Heidi. Ah. And then you're going to finish with your tree. When you are done with your tree, we're just going to release that foot. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale as you fold. Inhale into your flat back. Exhaling to start moving through those planks and chaturangas. Whatever your vinyasa looks like right now. Back into your, oh, your down dog. And then from here, we're just going to take that right leg up. We're going to step it to the outside of the left foot so your legs are crossed. You're just going to walk the hands back, inhaling into your flat back, exhaling into that fold. So starting to feel some more length through the outside of the right hip, just moving a little bit differently. And then from here, we're going to walk those hands back out. So you've got like a weird cross-legged down dog plank variation here. All we're going to do is uncross that right leg, let it hover, roll forward onto the left toe. So you're in a hover plank, chaturanga, up dog cobra, taking it back to down dog. We'll get that right leg back up once again, step it to the outside of the left hand. And then from here, we're going to stay on those back toes to really push forward through the toes, pulling forward through the right knee. So finding all that length. You might even find that you're pulling full so, so far forward through that right knee that you're coming onto the toes of that foot as well. That is totally fine. And so from here, we're just going to rock back to being centered. We're going to plug that back heel in. So it's, you've got your warrior feet. It's kind of, you feel sort of like you're in a skandasana variation here. And we're gonna roll back open into that side angle variation that we played with in our last flows. It's probably a little bit lower, just as we started from the ground instead of from the top. You're gonna just see if you can't let that back hand pull you all the way up into that warrior two. 
So using your core for that lift, nice, that looks good. Hands are coming into heart center. You're gonna take the left elbow to the outside of the right knee, finding your twist here. And from here, we're gonna to come towards center. Hands are gonna stay in prayer. We're flipping back onto the back toes. Left hand comes deep inside of the right foot. Right arm lifts as you find your full twist here. And so from here, we're gonna play around with that same idea that we played around with with our half moon seeing if we can't already have our arms in place for our transition. So you might have to rock just a little bit forward on that right foot to get the left hand in front of and diagonal to the right big toe. And then you're gonna start to transfer that weight to the right foot. Really ground through that foot as the leg presses you up into your evolved half moon. In our fifth breath, we're gonna let everything come back towards the mat. Inhale to your flat back. Exhale, moving through your vinyasa. Now we've got a couple of breaths here before we start to find that little twisty flow on the opposite side. So that left leg lifts. You're just gonna step it to the outside of the right foot so that the pinky toes are lined up. Hands walk back towards the feet. Inhale into your flat back. Exhale to find that forward fold variation. And then from there, we're walking out to find that weird plank up dog thing. We're gonna release the left foot, let it hover as you roll forward on that right toe, move through your vinyasa with that hover left leg. We'll meet back in your down dog. The left leg comes up, steps the out in between or outside of the hands. You're gonna kind of rock back and forth. Really, once again, seeing if that low runner's lunge is what feels good for you. Or if you really want to pull forward. And then from here, we've got to twist that back heel in, really root through the left hand. Find that opening. So you've already got your warrior two arms. You know, torso is already rotated open. All we're gonna do from here is engage that core and pretend like somebody's pulling this lifted right hand up into your warrior two. Hands come into heart center, moving into your revolve side angle. So the right elbow is finding the top of the left leg. And then from here, we're gonna come back up with our prayer hands. Take the right hand to the inside of the left foot. Maybe you go ahead and spin onto those back toes, twisting open. Twisting onto the toes is going to make your transition into a revolved half moon just a little bit easier. And then from here, we're going to start to kind of rock forward just a little bit. So the majority of the weight's already in the left foot. Reposition your right hand and see if you can use a combination of momentum and strength to get you into that revolved half moon.
And then from there, everything comes back towards the mat. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling back into that fold. And then as you're ready, you're going to find your vinyasa. Hopping or stepping back to your plank. Moving through your up dog. Taking it back down dog. And then from here, we're going to take that right leg up for one more little flow. Step it to the outside of the right hand. Drop that back knee. You're going to let the toes come long. We're just going to go ahead and keep, we're going to try to keep the right toes and the right knee facing to the front of the mat. As you twist back, normally we kind of open the toes. But if you keep them straight, you're going to need a slightly different twist. You might kick that back right leg up, see if the right hand can reach around, I mean that back left leg up, see if the right hand can reach around and grab it. From there, you're going to drop that back toe, the back foot, plug in those toes so you're backing that lower runner's lunge. And we're going to just press our way all the way up into your crescent. From crescent, you're going to spin that back heel in, arms come wide, warrior two. Then from here, you're straightening the front knee, pulling forward through the fingertips, hinging on down into that triangle. The side body is nice and open, so you might find that today you're able to take the half bind or even a full bind here. And in that fifth breath, we're going to bring both hands to the inside of that right foot. The left foot's pretty far behind us because we have warrior feet, so we're going to step that left foot forward just a little bit. So maybe it's roundabout center of your mat. We're going to go ahead and start creeping this left hand to the inside of the outside of the right foot. The right hand comes to your hip. When you feel stable, then you're going to start to twist open and lift that right arm into your revolved half, uh, your revolved triangle. From here, we're going to cartwheel those hands on up. You're going to let the arms come behind the back, clasping opposite elbows. We're moving into revolved uh, reverse prayer. And then from here, we're going to step that back foot forward just a little bit more. This is also going to help you start squaring your hips from the very beginning. Instead of having to fight your hips as you inhale for some length, exhale to roll down into the pyramid. Eventually, the forehead and nose will find the shin. And then when you're ready, pressing through that foot to roll back up. As you release the arms, release, back foot comes forward. Inhaling, arms come up overhead. Exhaling to fold. We've got to get that left side, and then we're going to start to move towards our mat. So flat back, moving through your vinyasa just to reset the body. And from here, you tip that left leg up. We're going to step it to the outside of the wrist. So you've got these first few moments in your lizard. Maybe you take it deeper than we've taken it before. Maybe you still just sort of need that fluid movement. We're not quite to the twist yet. 
so you don't have to totally commit. And then whenever you're ready, we are gonna stop to start to drop that back knee. Let the right toes come long. We're gonna to try to keep the left toes and knees pointed towards the top of your mat, even though we're gonna drop that left knee open. It's okay if the toes roll over. If you like roll onto the pinky toe, just we wanna keep the toe and knee looking at the same direction. And then we're gonna to start to twist over that foot or over that leg. So you're starting to look out past the left shoulder. And we're gonna add the quad. So you might kick that right leg up. See if you can't reach it with the left hand. And then we're going to release that, bring both hands to the inside of the foot. You're going to go ahead and tuck those back right toes as you make your way up into your crescent. Back heel spins open, warrior two. And then from here, we're gonna straighten that front knee, pull forward through the fingertips. Left hand comes to the inside of that leg. If you like a wide triangle, feel free to keep the legs here. You can always shorten your triangle if that feels better for you. Right hand comes to the mat, starts to come to the inside or the outside of that left foot. You're gonna go ahead and take the left hand to the hips. If this is where you need to stay to feel balanced, stay here. If you can continue opening, feel free to do so into your revolved triangle. And from here, we're cartwheeling the arms on up. We're gonna come into your grabbing opposite elbows or reverse prayer. If you like a shallower pyramid, you're gonna hop that back foot forward. We're gonna already think about trying to square the hips before we ever roll down into that pyramid. And then once you roll into your pyramid, just trying to find some stability and balance. You're just going to roll back on up. We're going to release the arms and the feet, meeting at the top of the mat. Inhaling as your arms come up overhead. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling flat back. Exhaling through plank and chaturanga. Into your up dog or cobra. And then you're going to take it back to down dog and hop on through to seated. And so from here, we're going to bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees drop open, inhale for your length, exhale into your fold. So inhaling, we're coming back up here. You're gonna take that right leg, take it out wide of your mat, let the left foot shimmy its way over. Inhale for some length to bring the arms overhead. Exhale as you twist all the way open and then fold towards those right toes into a lateral Janu A. When we take this posture laterally, that left shoulder wants to roll up. So we're gonna think about trying to roll that left shoulder down so that shoulders and hips are both level.
And inhale, you're gonna make your way back up. We're gonna take that left leg out wide. Let the right foot go all the way over. Inhale for your lead. Twist towards those toes and then fold. Peggy in with that right shoulder. Inhaling back up. We're going to take that right leg out wide. Yogi's choice as to whether you want to fold with arms forward or bind on the feet as you move into your wide leg forward fold. Inhaling back up. From here, we're going to let the legs come in together. Arms are coming up overhead. Exhaling into another deep forward fold. Maybe peace fingers are on the big toes. Maybe you're bound outside of the feet. Maybe the knees are bent. So from here, inhale, we're gonna make our way up. We're gonna go ahead and plant the feet on the mat. Clasp behind the right, the thighs as you rock back. Start to bring the heels up, feet flex. Use the arms to really pull that heart forward so you're not slumping into the low back. And if you feel stable here, that's when you choose to release the arms and or extend the legs. From here, we're gonna cross the right ankle over the left leg, squeeze in to a little ball for a moment. We're gonna come back into your boat, whatever variation you want to here. And then as you exhale, we're gonna cross left over right, Hug in for a couple breaths. And then as you exhale, you're gonna to start to come out, but real low and long into your canoe. And with your next exhale, you're coming all the way down onto the back. From here, we're going to start moving into some back bending. We're going to move through two sets of back bends. I will cue both bridges and wheels. Please feel free to take whatever you want. For bridges and wheels, heels come in close to the sitting bones and aligned with them. Bridges, your palms are down by the side, pressed into the mat. Wheels, hands are up near the ears with the fingertips pointed back towards the shoulders. Inhaling at the bottom, exhaling to press through hands and feet to lift. And then you just want to shoot for eight breaths. And after you've got eight breaths, moving through whatever counter pose you like. And then your next breath, we're gonna set up for that second back bend. Your yogi's choice. Heels are in close to the sitting, bones aligned with them. Palms are down by the side, pressed into the mat or up near the shoulders with the feet, or up near the ears with the fingertips pointed back towards the shoulders. Inhaling at the bottom, exhaling as you find your back bench for eight breaths. And 
and after your eight breaths, find doing your counter pose. Good, as you're ready, we're just gonna take those legs up. Maybe you stay here in a restorative leg lift. Maybe you rock back into a shoulder stand. Maybe you would prefer to take a more um, active inversion in the form of a headstand, a handstand, or a forearm stand. You've got 10 breaths. Maybe you play with multiple things. And after you've gotten your fill of inversions, we'll just meet on the back. Feet are planted on the mat. Arms will go ahead and come out into a T or go post arms. Sometimes it feels really good to just have the arms up overhead as we drop both sets of knees over towards the right. Maybe you think about stacking the knees mostly. You just want to think about keeping both shoulder blades grounded into your mat if possible. Inhaling through center. Exhaling on over towards the left. And from here, we're back at center. We're gonna let the feet come back towards the mat. Let the body come long. As you inhale, the right knee draws up and in, pulling away from the rib cage towards the shoulder, flexing through those left toes to really ground through the body. Using your wind removing pose to help you flatten out that curve in the lumbar spine. And with that next breath, we're just going to switch on over to the left. So the right leg comes long. Still keeping those toes flexed as we pull the left knee towards the left shoulder. And with that next breath, starting to release that leg out long. You're going to take the arms up overhead, finding that one last full body stretch. If the low back still feels a little wonky from your back bends and your back bends and your inversions, feel free to plant the feet on the mat. This is going to cause the low back to just flatten out and then let the knees rest in on each other. It's a great low back reset. And in that next breath, you're just gonna draw everything up and into you like a little ball, taking that second to rock side to side, ironing out any other little kinks in the body. We're just getting that nice last little moment of fun movement. It also kind of massages the body a little. And then when you're ready, Starting to make your way into that final Shavasana.
If there's any additional movements that you would like to take to round out your practice, feel free to do so. But if you're ready for that moment of quiet meditation, feel free to move there as well. With those next couple breaths, small movements will return to the body. Charging your fingers and toes. Moving to wrist and ankles. And then at your own pace, starting to make your way back to seated. With those next couple of breaths, we'll just take the arms up. Exhale, hands will come in. Thank you guys so much for tuning in on this kind of gray, gross morning. Hope everyone has an awesome Wednesday. Namaste.